let's chamfer this. Hi and welcome. So I've got a big project coming up that uh, is going to require a lot of use of the four jaw chuck. It should be the chuck I'm using all the time because it's the only chuck you can pull a part out of and put back in um, besides the collet chuck and have any hope of getting it uh, reasonably centered. I mean the three jaw uh, with my three jaw, it's a few thousands, like four or five thousandths. If I had one of the set true ones, you could get it to less than a thousandths, but I don't. Uh, so I'm going to be using the four jaw chuck, and I normally like to use soft jaws. Uh, I'm definitely going to need them so I don't mar the parts. Uh, what I've done in the past is I've made some copper soft jaws and just folded, formed them around the jaws. But since I'm going to be doing so much work this time, and these are really delicate, it's pretty thin copper, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make a die and a mold to, to make some brass jaws. And I'm only going to do this front section with a little bit of uh, wraparound. And they're going to be held in place while I'm positioning the parts by a little flap that comes over with a rare earth magnet. So I'm going to try this out. Um, I only have some... Uh, cold rolled steel here so it's definitely not the best material for making dies probably want to use some tool steel of some kind but uh, I don't have any uh, in this dimensions uh, even anything close so we're gonna try and make this work I am only gonna be forming brass so hopefully it won't wear they won't wear out too quickly all right so I'm gonna go dimension some stock here and then we'll see about uh, cutting these profiles so I dimensioned some stock off camera and uh, this guy is going to be for the, I don't know what you call the parts of a die. This is going to be the part that gets pressed down by the hydraulic uh, piston. And this will be the part that that presses into. So uh, I'm going to set these up on the mill and we're going to start to remove some material. This one's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is remove some material at a 45 degree angle off two sides. And to make that easier, if I mount this, if I put this in the vise at 45 degrees, I just come down 0 0.2370 and I just use CAD to figure that out. Trigonometry would do that. If anyone's ever interested in the trigonometry, I can show you how to do it. Um, but uh, I don't know if people are interested in that so much. So these days CAD kind of makes everything easy. So uh, yeah, so I'll just put it in 45 degrees, go down 0 0.2370 and all the way across in a flat. Flip it the other way, do the same thing, and we'll be done with that part. Although I do need to uh, bore a hole for the piston. It's a very small piston. Um, it looks like it's 0.7 inches that I've got to uh, drill on the top of this guy. Uh, the bottom part is going to be uh, sort of more of the same. Uh, just uh, mill out a channel, mount it at 40, well, mount a channel, mill out a flat to this depth on both sides and then turn it 45 and go to a depth again and that's why I have uh, rotated the part so that I know what this depth is so I can touch off on the uh, the point here and then go down to the final depth um, that's pretty much it uh, so I'm just gonna set this up on the mill and I'll bring you back so I showed the camera holder before um, and it is mounted through a rubber gasket to the main column of the mill but uh, I was having some issues with vibration when I took you know moderate to heavy cuts uh, I thought it, you know the combination of this being flexible with the weight on the end would solve this problem uh, but it didn't completely so what I've done for heavy cuts is I took an old uh, umbrella stand that I found in the trash actually and built a column for it that this can mount in this post can mount in so when I start to do heavy cuts, I can move the camera to a position where it won't be such a problem. So the uh, shaft of my hydraulic press is actually 0.7 inches. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and ream for half inch. I'm going to make an adapter on the lathe so that I can use my half inch reamer to make tighter fitting uh, uh, dies in the future if that's what uh, I end up wanting to do. Although this is only a six ton press and I'm thinking about getting a larger one, but Having a standard size seems like a reasonable idea, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with spot drilling, then I'm going to pre-drill 3 8 then go to 1 64th under a half, and ream. So, uh, let's uh, just spot drill it.
and we're done with this side. So as my ideas are ever evolving, the hole is up here. So I am going to put a tap 1024 hole on this side in case you know this thing slides off too much. That way I can uh, just put a screw in there to hold it in place on the adapter I'm going to make. So here's the setup for doing the 45s. I've got an angle, adjustable angle uh, device, which I could have just used a V-block, would have worked fine too. Um, underneath the part, set it at 45, tamped it down, this guy's nice and solid. Um, touched off, put this guy in neutral and just raised up the knee until it just started to touch ever so slightly. Um, if this was a critical part, you could use feeler gauge or brass or some other type of material to protect the finish but uh, in this case it's coming off anyways so I know what my depth needs to be ultimately um, we need to go down 0.237 total so uh, I'm just gonna pop this guy in gear and uh, we're just going to take off some material kind of slowly here and see how it works out. Uh, man, this is really close. I wonder, I wonder if I can use my blast shield to keep the chips from coming my way here. All right, let's give it a shot. So, probably can be faster than that. 1200 RPM, say. So, with 25,000. So for a hundred thousand, since uh, I'm initially cutting off very little material. Coming back towards me is climb milling. This is conventional milling. flipped over here's the side we just did down here <laughs> magnetic <laughs> this is the flat and this is the corner we're going to do so we've touched off again found our spot this time we've learned a lesson so first pass we're just going to take a hundred thousandths Oops. still in neutral So we're going to climb mill both sides. So come this way, come back. I'm curious if that'll make it look the same. So there's some overlap in. And that should be it. All right, here's the final product. Uh, now we just need to do the bottom side, which might be the die. I don't, I, they're both, I think they're both called die. I don't know, I gotta look that up. But in any case, this is the top part that plunges down. We just have to finish the bottom part next. So I'm about to start on this guy and you'll notice the datum point I chose was this corner. Now, if you had a part that was very important that it was symmetrical, um, it probably would not be the best choice to choose the corner as your datum point because if you were a little bit off Then you wouldn't be able to get the part symmetrically uh, Cut if you chose the middle of the part instead as long as the outer dimensions were the flexible ones Then the datum point down the center would be a better choice because that way it would always be symmetrical Regardless of what the actual dimension of the piece is um, So that's thoughts that were running through my head uh, Maybe you'll find that interesting. Maybe not uh, so uh, in this case, we're going to we're going to remove this material from here to here, plunge down and remove the center section and then put it at an angle and remove the remaining material. So uh, that's my plan. So uh, let me get that set up. I do have my zero on this corner over here and I can remove it and put it back and still find that zero. So that's good. All right. So we're going to take a first pass and we're going to do 
like uh, 50 thousandths passes. Um, we got to go to a depth of uh, 0.275. So that'll be quite a few passes, but uh, I might uh, increase the uh, depth on following passes if uh, you know things aren't going too roughly. Just don't want to try too much at one time. Just make sure the part is in there. Okay. Get it back in gear. Put it in neutral to find my Z height. All right. You get the gist. I'll bring you back when I get a little closer. So now we're uh, doing our finishing passes. We're just taking off the last few thousandths just along each edge. Sixteen thousandths to be uh, exact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and do a spring pass when I'm done because even with this, since I'm cutting the full height, there could be uh, a little bit of uh, deflection of the cutter. So we'll just do a spring pass, see what we get. Doesn't look like much of anything. That uh, looks pretty good. I've got all my uh, ways locked as well, only the X is free. Alright, so we'll set up for the other side and I'll bring it back. So the next set of cuts are down the center section here. And uh, let's see if I can show you. Just got to, let me go and get this out of the way, there. I got to cut the flat part, so I'm going down another 370 thousandths just in the center section, which happens to be just a little bit less than a half of an inch. So as a result, um, <laughs> I had to switch to a smaller cutter, so here we are. Uh, so I'm going to take these in pretty light passes since it's only a quarter inch cutter, and I'm also going to speed it up. So that's 1200. We're going to go for some 2000 RPM. And I'm just going to go all the way down to 370 thousandths in one, in one line here. Uh, so I'll show you a pass or two and then uh, I'll bring you back because this is probably going to get tedious, so... The last uh, end mill was a roughing cutter. So uh, it didn't cut anywhere near as nice as this one. This one is a finishing end mill. It's like a six loop. So I'll do a bunch more passes and bring you back. I do like uh, 13 passes a side here. After I finish the forward pass, I'm going to come back with a spring pass. It gives the vacuum clear because i got to get the chips out of there. Come back with a spring pass and we can go to the angle. A 
This is a quarter inch six flute cutter. So it does a, has a really nice finish, but uh, if you're not careful, you can clog the flutes pretty easily. All right, let's set up for the 45s. So in order to find a location, I'm picking up off the edge of this part over here, which is going to be my X0. And that'll tell me how far over to get here. And so that's going to be my X0. And I just need to come up and go over 100 thousandths to compensate for the 200 thousandths thickness of the, the end. And then I need to pick up on the, so the height. way I find zero is I put the uh, mill in neutral and I run the end mill backwards so that it's less likely to do much damage to the edge. This isn't a critical edge again, so if it was, you should use shim stock, find where the shim stock touches, and then uh, compensate for it after. But this is not ultra critical, so um, if it gets a little bit of a mark on it. Okay, there it's just starting to touch, so that's going to be my Z0. So, now I just got to figure out how far to come over, and I just got to mill this section out. So let me do some calculations, and I'll be right okay. back. So I've done my calculations, and I'm going to go down the center of this to depth, and then i got to go back and forth like 12 thousandths is all uh, in either direction. So uh, um, we're going to start with like uh, 50 thousandths because uh, it's just going to be all peak. It should be pretty easy on it. And uh, total depth, total depth is... Uh, 0.194, uh, 0.194, so I'll show you a pass and then we'll come back. I might slow this down a little bit because it's at 2,000 RPM. Let's try, no, oh, it's in neutral. <laughs> Let's put that in gear and uh, try it again. Okay. Was very clean so let's go for we're starting to get bigger bites so we'll do 25 thousandths so I'm gonna come to final death and I'm gonna lock my knee pardon me if I'm bumping you and uh, we'll add a little lube I don't know that I've needed any this is cutting really smoothly the pretty small cut, so. so that should be final depth. Add lube and it makes quite a mess. So now I gotta go either side. So 0.822. That's a one side. That is really close. 0.822. Not much material to move there. And then we gotta go to the other side, uh, which is should be all there is to that and I guess uh, a little bit of burr I kicked up there I will go blend out after so now all I need to do is rotate this 180 so that it can sit the same way facing this way all of my measurements will be identical although I got to do something to make sure when I take it out I can find my zero again so here's after the final pass just need to deburr it it actually left little tiny bits of uh, metal along the edges so I need to blend that in and then we can uh, Go and make the adapter on the lathe and then we can try this guy out. So I'm just going to make the adapter piece here and I've used, I switched to a four jaw chucks because I'm going to have to take this part out and then put it back in. So uh, uh, in order to do that 
I either have to use my 5C collet chuck, which does not go to one and a quarter inch like this, uh, or um, I have to forge off. I want it to be concentric, and I know this isn't critical, but I thought I'd start uh, improving uh, my uh, behavior a little bit and uh, work towards more precision than I had in the past. So with a forge off chuck, if you take a part out and put it back in, you have to re-indicate it but uh, at least you can uh, get it centered again. centered. And that's the high spot. Uh, oops, a little bit overkill there. Oh, wasn't quite tight enough. All right, so. That's a little bit out of round spot on the outside there. It's wiggling less than a thousandth. I will we'll call that good, especially since we're just going for our first cut. So I think we're going to bore, we're going to face this off and we're going to bore a 700 thousandth hole in it for the one side. And then we're going to flip the part around and we're going to uh, reduce the diameter to half, a, uh, half an inch for the uh, other part I made. Basically my Arbor Press, if you forgot, my Arbor Press has a 0.7 inch uh, arbor on it. Uh, it's not really an arbor press. My hydraulic press has a 0.7 inch arbor on it. And I made this part 0.5 because I have a reamer for that. And it's really easy to, if I'm gonna make more than one of these parts to do half an inch holes, I don't have any drills for 0.7. So uh, I'm gonna make this adapter and uh, we'll go from here. This isn't the best material, by the way. This is 303 stainless, it's just what I had. Um, I would have liked some chrome molly, but I don't have any chrome molly this uh, diameter. Uh, something that was hardenable, anyways. All right, well, let me uh, break this setup down and proceed. Just going to face this part, take off 25 thousandths. After I face this, I'm going to chamfer the edges, and I'm going to drill and bore the 7.7 inch hole in uh, the center. So I don't normally have my uh, cutter, my uh, tool post turned at such an angle, but I found that when I'm doing face milling like this, especially with aluminum, not so much with uh, the chrome molly, but if I have my cutter turned out more so there's a lot more back relief, then I don't tend to get chips stuck in the back and then dragged across the surface, which ruins the finish. So that's why I did this. I'm going to put it back for all the rest of the operation. A little bit of chamfer. By the way, if you're interested, I have two different style chamfer cutters, uh, different angles on each. And uh, the advantage of this one is if I ruin the tips on this one, this is the same cutter rotated to the unused side. So I can use the exact same inserts uh, and use a different side, which is really handy. But they are different angles because I think this is uh, maybe 70. So that would make this side uh, 110 if that's what it is. It might be an 82 which would make this 100. So I forget what it is. So we're gonna start with center drilling. So we're getting ready to 
bore the quarter inch hole, the pilot hole, and this will be my first chance to use the uh, quarter, my tailstock uh, DRO that I added in another project. Uh, you should look through my projects and find it or I can put a link to it. Uh, anyway, so we're going to get back and we're going to bore this hole, drill this hole quarter inch, then half inch, and then bore the rest to 700th, uh, 0.7. So that was my first 50,000th pass, and we're right around where I expected to be. We're at uh, 552, and uh, uh, I'm going to do one more pass with this guy, and then I'm going to switch to a larger boring bar because this one tends to chatter because it's such a small diameter with you know moderate stick out. So I switched to the larger boring bar, we're going to do a 50,000th pass, then take a measurement and walk in the final. So it should be around 650. Uh -huh. 651.7. Alright, we're right where we expected to be. Okay, so let's chamfer this. Let's chamfer this guy and then go over and give it a measure. A lot of stick out on the thin chamfering tool. <laughs> Okie doke. out of the four jaw, um, give it a quick test fit, and if it fits, then I'm going to come back, flip it over, and do the final reduction. So one of the things I did when I removed this part, I've taken it out, I'm going to cut off, I cut off some of the excess material that had actually slipped in the jaw, so I'm going to have to face this a little bit to fix that. Um, one of the things I did here was I uh, just loosened the two jaws either side of this identifying mark here, so when I come back, um, it should be a little bit easier to put back. I just mostly need to tighten those two. Ideally, that's all you need to tighten, but since things aren't perfectly round, that's probably not going to be the case. But, uh, I'm to some high spot. Oh, that's pretty close right there. Okay, that's within a half a thousandth or so. That looks plenty good for this. This is cold rolled, so the fit isn't even... This isn't even perfectly round. It's just approximated and actually pretty good though. All right, so let's just face the daylights out of this guy and I'll bring you right back. So after some messing around, I got my stock down to the final size. I can't have this piece be too long this way longitudinally because my, uh, my hydraulic press really does not have a lot of space under the uh, arbor. So um, we're just gonna take this one inch diameter down to uh, half an inch diameter and uh, we should be good to go so that is my goal um, 
I am going to do it like 50 thousandths passes. So I'll show you a couple and I'll bring you back. So I've increased the feed rate here to uh, 5 thousandths of revolution. Here's the higher feed rate, 50,000 passes. It's actually going very nicely. I haven't done any measurements yet because I can tell I'm still a ways off, but I just want to show you what a higher feed rate looks like. It's still not pushing it at all. I do have concerns about trying to push it harder here only because I'm so close to the chuck I don't want to crash it accidentally so this is already moving really quickly so no complaints and I can't take a bigger bite because this insert's only good up to 50,000 So I'm going to take a, a rough look and see where I'm at. Okay, so 749. So halfway there. I'll bring you back. All right, so we're coming down to the end. I've slowed the feed rate down. We're 5.521, so I'm going to do this in two passes. And I'm going to do the first pass at uh, 11 thousandths, and then we'll hopefully do another 10. Clear out some debris, and I haven't done uh, the depth to final depth yet either. So 510, so it worked out just like a bomb said. Uh, pretty darn, uh, pretty darn good idea to half and half because then you know if you're on or not. So we're gonna take the last 10, and then we're gonna do the overall depth. So I gotta take a little bit off there as well. We should be really close. Let's see how we did. Shows me three tenths over. Let me chamfer the edge and then to test fit because that probably is the ultimate uh, decider. And this isn't a precision part, although I tend to approach everything as if it's precision. I'm not a uh, job shop, so uh, if if I was, then I would have to just shoot for the tolerances that were specked out. But since I'm doing it for myself and I uh, I'm really new at this. I uh, I tend to try and be more accurate so that when I need to be, I can. Oh, there we go. It's a great fit. So 
Here's the piece that's going to go on there. It'll be tightened down with the set screw. I'm going to add a set screw to the back of this as well so that nothing will fall out so I can focus on pressing the parts. And uh, let's get to doing a test pressing and see how we did. So we've finished the uh, two parts of the die and the adapter now. So uh, let's pop it in the arbor in the, <laughs> I keep calling it the arbor press, in the hydraulic press and see how it performs. I know that if I have to do much with it, uh, this soft steel is going to get deformed kind of badly. So what I might end up doing is uh, case harden it uh, at another time. So that's where I sit with this and uh, I'll bring you right back after I get the hydraulic press set up. So I'm sure the experienced mold makers, if there are any that would watch my videos, are just laughing at uh, what I've done here. Um, I've I ran a couple test runs with some uh, brass, and for starters, this sharp edge here um, scrapes some material. So the brass pushes down into this, and it's fine until the very end when it tries to pull the last part straight. And when it does that, it uh, it scoops out some uh, brass some, uh, most of the time in one spot or another. So uh, I need to fix that, so I'm going to round over that corner. But before I do that, I'm also going to add some horizontal alignment to the part. So I'm going to relieve this 50 thousandths on side to side here. And I'm basically going to go down 50 thousandths and over to about a little over 0.1 inches from each side. And that'll be the right size piece of stock to... Uh, to uh, press fit in here that that'll be the final size so that'll align it horizontally so i won't have to worry about that um, a lot of things that uh, in hindsight i would have thought would have been a good idea would have been to also fold up the front tab simultaneously would have required this to be longer um, also if it was wider i could have some alignment pins that the top piece would slide up and down on so it would always be aligned properly so if i was going to go into production uh, mode with this, I would definitely have to make some changes. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're going to start by uh, relieving this part and then rounding over the corners a bit so that I don't scoop some material. Just a spring pass on the way back, clean it up. I have to deburr it. So now I've relieved both sides. Um, I didn't keep the video for all of this because it was squealing quite a bit. So probably really unpleasant to listen to. Anyways, I'll bring you back as we do the roundover. So I had to slow this down appreciably because this is only high speed steel, not carbide. Still got to deburr that part. I'm just going to round over the edge a little bit and then finish it uh, with some uh, stones. Okay, I think that'll work. So all that was to do is to relieve this edge and have the parts be able to slide over them. I'm going to take this and uh, take stone and round it off the rest of the way. This is an eighth inch radius uh, and it's too big. Uh, I don't need that much of a radius, so I just need to relieve this edge a little bit. So let's do that and I'll bring you back. Hopefully this will work. So I've got a brass test piece loaded. I've used a couple magnets just for front centering of the part. 
Um, this overlaps a little bit so that I can bend it up over it to give space for the magnets I'm going to glue on this piece. Well, here goes nothing. This is test number one. So this thing sort of self-aligns too. Okay, and then I just need to bend this guy up over. It looks like uh, from the back here everything's good. See, I'm not quite, actually not quite sure how to do it. <laughs> Didn't think of everything, that's for sure. I need a bigger, a bigger press, so I'm going to try and get something in here to bend this flat up with this, and then I can glue a magnet onto it. Uh, at the end, I'll pull this out, let you see. All right, so. I was able to bend this part over. Uh, I ended up using uh, a tiny little uh, brass hammer that I had. Just tapped it against it, it worked great. So let's pop this guy out and see how it works. Let's release the piston. <laughs> Hopefully it didn't score it. It does tend to stick a little bit to the mold. And I am sure that if I knew what I was doing a little more, I could uh, prevent that. But uh, seeing as how this is the uh, first mold I've ever made, I've got a lot to learn, I'm sure. Although it's not bad, just a little bit of tap. So there it is. That actually looks pretty good. So one of these magnets will be glued right here, and that should hold it to the jaws. So here is the... Uh, Final profile, actually pretty good, I think. Um, we'll see how they work in practice. All right, so here are the finished products. I'm sort of on mixed ground with the uh, magnet idea, because it will hold it in place, but I do have concerns that it's also going to attract a lot of uh, metal particles when I'm doing steel. Um, also, I designed these dies for 50 thousandths material, which this one piece is, and I grabbed another piece, or maybe this one, yeah, this one. I grabbed another piece out of my bin, the other three are made out of that, 62 and a half thousandths, and uh, that wedged in there because there wasn't enough clearance for the extra. So um, definitely would uh, make this differently uh, in the future, I think, it, you know, more experience. Uh, this would have a wings that would have pins that would align it with this so you could just stick a piece of material in and down it would go. Um, I'd overlap it with this piece and I would extend this piece out and to fold this end piece over so I wouldn't have to do it by hand because you could all do it all in one operation without any difficulty. But this was my first ever attempt so uh, I'm not too unhappy. Uh, let's go try these on the lathe and see how they fit. So there's one, there's two, and these are as they came out of the die. I didn't have to do anything, fortunately. Uh, they fit nicely. I have hammered these, uh, you know, made them by hand before, and what I found is that uh, I had to use thinner material, and they flexed quite a bit and didn't quite fit. So they'd pinch either on this side, and then when you tighten them, then it pushes out. So I don't know, I haven't used these yet, but uh, I will be in my upcoming videos, so I will let you know how I like them. But that was my idea for my first go around. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. So one more thing, <laughs> I just realized, hindsight being 2020, is that an unfortunate idea was putting the magnet in the folded part on top rather than along one side, like right here, or maybe both sides. Because when you put it on top, I'm giving up this ground surface, and I just realized that as I was editing this video and looking at this. So uh, another design flaw, if I had to do all over again, I would make them much longer with a magnet on the side, not the top, because I don't want to give up these ground surfaces. Because if you have a round part that you want to, you know, that has a flange that you want to push up against this, now I can't. So that was a mistake. So I'm sure there's lots more that you guys could find wrong with uh, my design choices, but uh, this is just another one and uh, live and learn. <laughs>